Welcome back to Harvester, or as the French say, Le Harveste, probably. Anyway, here we are in front of the uh, nuclear base, I guess, and here's Mr. Torso Man. Um, this is the guard of the base. <laughs> what a way to start the episode. And uh, let's go ahead and get to talking to him. Colonel Buster Monroe. Oh, who goes there? Uh, they tell me my name is Steve. All right, the Section 21. Keep your distance, son. I wouldn't want to have to blow your head off. Ooh. That makes two of us. So you're the amnesiac, huh? Just another draft dodging ploy the way I see it. But at least you're not an alien. You see their ships every now and then. Sometimes Swell bags one in the woods. Who are you? Colonel Buster Monroe, commander of the Harvest Nuclear Missile Installation. Keeping America safe from those who would dye our flag red, white, and pink. <laughs> These are nuclear missiles? Goddamn right they are. Every one of them ready to rain death on the Ruskies. All I gotta do is hit the button and blammo! That's not how it works. The price of vodka goes through the roof. Along with the vodka. Well, I suppose you have, you know, safeguards against accidents? Safeguards? Don't be such a weak sister. There are no safeguards. This is the 50s. <laughs> then you have sole control of the, uh, missiles. That's right. Been in charge here since WW2, when I got my lower torso shot off in the war. Those panty wastes in Washington wanted to stick me behind a desk. To hell with that! They owed me! I left my legs in Dusseldorf. They owed me! Of course, they felt that after the trauma of having to crawl from Germany to England trailing my intestines behind me, I was too emotionally unstable to continue in the military. That's why they gave me this nice cushy job and put me in charge of the nuclear missile. Of course. So, as you do, uh, the button. Why are you asking about the button, son? I'm just a little nervous about it. I mean, suppose an accident happens. Don't get your panties in a bunch, mister. The button is perfectly safe. I keep it on my person all the time. <laughs> yeah, just ready to be squashed. No commie bastard is getting his mitts on this button. No siree, Bob. No one initiates a nuclear holocaust in Harvest except me. <laughs> doesn't that make you feel bad? No! No, it doesn't. Uh, commie bastard. Frankly, all these questions are making me a little suspicious of you. Maybe you're one of those pink-blooded Americans. Can you give what? me any reason why I shouldn't shoot you right now? Are you calling me a fireman? Um, I mean, no, technically, no, not really. Let's go. I appreciate your honesty, comrade. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. He blows my fucking head off and initiates a nuclear holocaust. What a game over. Beautiful shit. Okay. Um, thankfully, I just saved. All right. Oh. Uh, Let's skip well, through all that, this shit. So, who, Colonel, the God. That, that, those. All right. Um, let's hear about your lower torso. You say before you came to harvest, your lower torso was shot off in the war? That's right. I was behind enemy lines. The night was dark. The rain wet. The plastique I was supposed to rig the bridge with precariously sandwiched between my knees as I crawled in the muddy mud. <laughs> I didn't see the Jerry taking aim at me with his machine gun until half of me was flying through the air. 
with a quick spray of bullets in a straight line. It shot my body clean in two. My lower body landed at that Jerry's feet. I can still hear him laughing as I started crawling in the general direction of England, calling behind me in broken English. My friend, where is your legs? Looky, what have we here? Some legs? Hey, did they never lose some legs? I'll never forget looking back over my shoulder and seeing that crowd doing the can-can with my legs. <laughs> A few weeks later, with only my compass and a pair of nylons, I made it back to <laughs> what? safety. What? Now the Krauts are our friends, and the commie bastards are our enemies. But even so, there's at least one crowd out there that I'll never invite over to Sunday dinner. Is it the one doing the can-can with your legs? Harvest. Harvest is a fine town, steeped in traditional American values. But that lodge... Well, it makes me suspicious. Don't mind saying it. They've got their fingers into everything around here. Like a certain red commie bastard menace, which shall be nameless. Um, I've decided to join the lodge. Uh, then I'll be sure to keep you away. You read me wrong, mister. I think you should join the lodge, infiltrate it, and report back on any red sympathizers. A report could affect my decision on what I've got to do. Yes. Well, bye. Remember, duck and cover. Yes, duck and cover. As we all know, the best way to escape a nuclear explosion, duck and cover. Remember, kids? Let's get the hell out of here. Okay. To the lodge. <laughs> Look at this fucking nerd. Examine the hole. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Red eyes gleam with eerie malevolence from the darkness. The pipe. Alarming green sludge oozes from the drain. It looks as ancient as the building itself. Initiates may enter the Hall of the Order of the Harvest Moon. Did you... say something? I did not speak, but my mind touched yours. Telepathy? But how? Only those who seek enlightenment warrant my attention. Do you hunger for true knowledge? Do you hunger? Yes, I'd like to join the Lodge. There are always obstacles to the path. You must first fill out an application to be considered for initiation into the Mysteries. Fine, give me the form. Applications are available at the Post Office. Postmaster Boyle disseminates them to the uninitiated. I do not sully my hands. Then I just fill it out and return it to you, or what? You may find it difficult to obtain an application. You will no doubt need to find some way to persuade Postmaster Boyle to give you one in the middle of the month, as it is against his rules. When you do, however, bring it to me. And if you are worthy, you will be put to the test. This place sounds boring. All these fucking rules. Gotta fill out your application. I'm gonna go back to the mortuary because there was someone I was supposed to be able to talk to, and I think I must have missed a door or something. Yes, like right here. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Ew! A disembodied organ, which was never meant to pump formaldehyde. The fucking noise in here is a- The fan's whirring blades barely stir the stench-laden air. A pair of bloody handprints are smeared across the glass. Why? A nasty-looking sink. Examine the glue. Astro-glue. 
Let's take it. You can't have that, Stephen. I need it for my work. And may I say you're a rude young man for attempting to steal it. I was only going to borrow it. Indeed. And have you anything I could hold as security? Security? Like what? Money? I'm afraid that's not good enough. I need that glue for my work. You must present me with something significant if you'd have me part with it. Why are you dressed like a fucking magician? Stephen. Who are you? I am Daniel Moynihan, mortician and proprietor of the Wayward Hotel. Most people ask me why I don't remember their names. Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. Stop it! Besides, as one who deals with the dead, I try not to involve myself in the affairs of the living. Your loss of memory is of no concern to me, true or false. Ironic, considering my recent involvement in a charity event. What are you talking about? My complaints were central to the scheduling of the upcoming Harvest Bake Sale. I am gratified the Order of the Harvest Moon got involved. The proceeds will certainly help cover my losses. So this guy's running the bake sale to cover his losses for This bake autopsies? sale is a joint effort of the Harvest PTA and the Order of the Harvest Moon. The proceeds will be used to set up a fund for transients. In other words, bums and societal rejects without families who wander into Harvest uninvited. Then, the Order is setting up shelters for the homeless? Not shelters. Graves. You see, a great number of these hobos die while passing through. Don't ask me why, it's what those people do. Use your common sense, Stephen, memory or no. If they were involved in setting up homeless shelters, then why would I be involved? And why would I be sustaining losses? Who the fuck knows? Why does everyone co who come in here die? As always, the Order of the Harvest Moon has taken the lead in addressing our societal ills. Through their sponsorship of the Blood Drive and the Bake Sale, the Lodge ensures that all our needs are met. Needs? Such as... Pardon me, there are corpses to prepare. And my losses have been substantial of late. If you're sincerely interested in the Order, however, you should stop by the Lodge and speak with the Sergeant at Arms. Why should I be interested, Mr. Moynihan? Of all the spots in Harvest, the Lodge is the most prominent, literally and figuratively. It is the ambition of everyone here to join, and join you must to attain wisdom. What kind of wisdom? If I knew, I'd be a member. I have the feeling you have what it takes to join the Order, Stephen. We all believe that. Whether or not you live up to your potential is up to you. Okay. It seems that, like some elephant's graveyard, people of low station come to harvest to die. They simply drop dead, penniless, and they all need burials. God knows, by putting these people up at the Wayward Hotel, I do more than my fair share. So why must I pay for the coffins and burial materials as well? That's your job! My losses to the dead are substantial. Hopefully the bake sale will offset some of them. Uh, the dead. Yes, I prepare them. I use this astro glue to close my autopsy incision rather than sutures. It's much faster, more efficient. Of course, it only holds for a short while, but once they're in the ground, who cares if they split open? They will anyway. The pressure of the gases and the worms pressing outward, rupturing the cavity open. So why bother with fancy needlework? Wow, well, you a must do a lot of business approach. here. But what of my losses? Do you realize if it weren't for the efforts of the Order of the Harvest Moon, the bake sale and so forth, even with the Wayward Hotel, I'd be hard-pressed to stay in business. Yeah, okay. I'd say it's been a pleasure, but I find the company of the living so wearisome. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, talking to him wasn't very interesting, but at least I found an item that I'll eventually need, this Astro Glue, I'm guessing. That leads me to believe that the cemetery as well. There was someone I was supposed to be able to talk to at the cemetery, but I didn't see anyone. 
me just take a quick look here again. Nope. Nope. Fuck it. I don't even give a shit. Let's leave. General store. We're supposed to use the copier here. And make a copy of the checkbook and the note. The blackmailing stuff. Okay. And the note. And does it just come into my inventory? Yes, it's right here. Okay. Photocopy of note, photocopy of checkbook. Perfect. To the post office we go. Look at that. I just found out I can punch shit. I don't know why. I've never had a reason to punch anything. But apparently you can punch. Okay. Let's show the button we got. To boil. My button. Why I lost that months ago. Where did you find it? Funny thing, that. I found it in the ashes. At the newspaper building. What are you implying? That I had something to do with setting the fire? Preposterous. Why, a hundred people must have visited that site since the fire. Uh... But none of them had buttons like this. You just try showing that button to Sheriff Duane, son. He'll laugh you right out of his office. Will he? Will he? He was blackmailing you about something! What does this mean? Why is the sheriff blackmailing you? That's an interesting item. But the fact that you ask me that question proves you know nothing. Hmm. I'm not threatening you, I just want to help. I can show you around. Hmm. You don't know what you're doing, and I'm not going to tell you. So you might as well forget about this, or better yet, Take it to the sheriff and see what it gets you. Mm. Oh, really? What does this mean? Let's try the other answer. I know why the sheriff is blackmailing you. Hmm. This is unexpected and awkward. But my luck's been bad ever since Duane found that darn gas can at the newspaper building the day after the fire. He has this insane notion that it's mine. I pay him, not because I'm guilty, but because I don't want him slurring my good name around Harvest. Oh, naturally. <laughs> you know, he keeps that gas can in the evidence room at his office. I'd be really grateful to whoever could fetch me that can. Grateful enough to provide him with a lodge application. Ooh. Oh, and Steve, you'll keep this to yourself. If you're smart. Oh, really? I'll keep this to myself if I'm smart. Look at me. Look how smart I am. Look at that stance. Ah, oh, beautiful. Um, what about the other copy? What does this mean? Oh, same thing. Hmm. Oh, Nat. You know. Oh, and all right. Fine. Fuck it. Let's go. Let's go show this to the. Uh, Police officer, Mr. Dwayne. Hey, buddy. 
Would you like to see this? Now, where did you get these, Steve? Up your ass, bitch. Um, what would be the best answer? Does it matter? I've got them. I guess not. Of course, I could kill you right now. But you won't, because I've got the original checks, which prove that Boyle burned down the newspaper building, and that you've been blackmailing him to keep it quiet. I've hidden them. Anything happens to me, they might turn up. Soon. Uh-huh. All right. You've got me, boy. Tell you what. I'd give you one of Sheriff Dwayne's custom deluxe get-out-of-jail-free cards. That is, if I catch you doing something, I'll look the other way. Once. That's the deal. How about it? <laughs> Corrupt cops! Isn't that good? I'll take it. All right. Just bring me the originals and we'll close the deal. Okay. He wants the originals. Check a book in the note. Should I do this? So, you brought them after all, did you? That's right. And you said something about a get out of jail free card? Yeah. But can you give me a good reason why I shouldn't just kill you right now and take them back? Um, I don't know. A deal's a deal, my brother. You should have picked another profession, Steve. Uh-oh. You're a lousy blackmailer. And maybe you'll listen to your guidance counselor in the next life. Oh, good. Is that my mom? Somebody help me! <laughs> what do you people want from me? Oh my god. Too late for that, boy. Ain't it, Sergeant? Indeed it is, Sheriff. <laughs> Look at that guy. He can barely keep from cracking a smile. He's like, this is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> oh my god. Woo! Nice. All right, let's try again. Okay, let's try this again. So, you... that's right. Yeah. But let's do the. I made another set of copies. Yeah, you did it upright, Steve. Guess my best play is to pay up. That's right, bitch. The next time I catch you for something, I owe you one, and no hard feelings. No hard feelings from me. Absolutely not. Do I have it? The button. I think I forgot to turn in the button. Let's go back and turn in the stupid button. Did I turn in the button last time? My button. Funny thing. What do you? Yes, have? I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Cut the what crap. What if I did? I guess I'd be pretty grateful to anyone who could help get me off the hook. How? You seem like a capable lad. Hypothetically, let's say. Oh, and Steve. Yep. 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 Okay. Um. Gas can. Oh my God! I can't believe it. After all this time... Where's my application, Boyle? Here, take it. With my thanks. You know, this morning as I was making my rounds, I noticed an awful lot of television aerials on the roofs. Seems like more and more each day. You got me this can just in time, youngster. I may have need of it again. What do you mean? There's another reason why Sheriff Duane didn't investigate the Sentinel fire. If you'd like to get something else on the blackmailing bastard, check around the television station. Why you still can? Hmm. You know, everyone in this whole fucking place is screwed. And... 
That's a pen. ticket. There we go. Pen on it. And now we've signed it. We have our full application. Okay. This is really fucking hard to read. How often do you eat meat three times a day? Uh, first name Steve, middle name, last name, nobody will tell me. Street, who knows? City, harvest. Do you have any physical disabilities that prevent you from being able to eat meat? <laughs> no. Do you have a, what, do you have a tricycle? No. Do you enjoy the art of people watering? Yes. What is this? Is that what that says? Can you climb a rope? Yes. Are you allergic to any of the following? Gay Merle Crisp? Cedar? I can't... I really can't read it. I'm assuming I should be able to. Maybe it's like... Modern computer systems are just so... Like, good now that the resolution is just screwed. Whatever. Um... I think we have what we need. So I think we're ready to head back to the, uh... To the Dungeons and Dragons guy. And turn this in. I keep going to the top... For my inventory, because I've played other games where that's the case. Okay, uh, where is it? Yes. There we go. I see you've managed to acquire an application. Yes. That demonstrates resourcefulness. A desirable trait for prospective members. Thank you. You need a rest. Report back here for your next assignment. Okay. Night falls upon the city of harvest as I take off my clothes for bed. Please stop there. Please no more. A burger? <laughs> Beautiful. I mean, truly Academy Award winning acting. Do they even audition people for this shit, or do they just find people around the office? Oh, here we go. Starting a new day. It's a like Groundhog Day. Well, let's go greet the family. What's up, Hank? What, what you doing? What do you want, Steve? Still sick, bro? That's right. I think I got the flu. Maybe you'd feel better if you stopped watching television and went to bed. Maybe you'd be quiet with a steak knife in your heart. The fuck? What? Just leave me alone, Steve. Believe me, you got your own problems. Little fucking batshit crazy kid. Threatening to kill me? I'll Good. fucking kill you. Finally. Whatever. Let's talk to our weirdo mom. S still baking cookies. Hello, dear. How are you today? Bye. No Don't topics. Don't forget to put the papers out. Uh-huh. So apparently I missed uh, something here with this baby, too. I don't know what I was supposed to look at. Every time I tried to click on her, it won't Hello, do dear. shit. Am I supposed to type in sister, maybe? I thought I tried this before. It didn't work. Sister? Shh, you'll wake her. I just put her down to sleep. If she wakes up, she'll just want to eat again. Why is there Darn a bug it, in I'm there? I'm busy, and if you think I'm going to play along with this nonsense, you're crazier than Sparky down at the firehouse. Fine. Maybe I am crazy. I can't rule that out. Why can't you just help me a little? Is that too much to ask? Now you've done it. Are you happy? 
Poor baby. There, there. Did your brother scare you? Let me see. <laughs> what? Saw <laughs> that wasp woman. She's a monster. That's what she is. Oh my god. Oh my god. Just fucking whacked your kid in the face. Who's Sparky? Who cares about that prancing, fire hydrant squatting sissy boy right now? Your <laughs> sister's eating a tarantula and you're still fooling around. If she's my sister. Enough. Go bother Hank or Stephanie, why don't you? I'm trying to bake cookies. Yeah, I've already talked to Hank. Don't forget to put the papers out for Jim. Yeah, he's a fucking psychopath. Okay. Let's get the paper. What's up, Jimbo? Here's your paper. See how easy it is? Yes. And we also have your, uh... Shoes. Your bloody sneakers I picked up from the evidence locker. Swell! Here's the keys to the broom closet at Gein Memorial. That's where they meet every day. About 3.45, as soon as everyone has gone home. Sometimes I hide in there beforehand. Daddy-o, I see some stuff that's real nasty. <laughs> Take it from me. You made a good swap. Oh. Do I get to go to the school and have a show in the closet? I'm not sure that's some shit I want to see. But to the school we go! Alright. Broom closet. Let's whip out the key. Where the fuck is it? Okay. Uh. Hi. I'm sorry, did I interrupt? Hmm. Let me take a picture. I love me some blackmail. <gasps> You're busted! <gasps> what? Screwing in the school broom closet? What will people think? Are you blackmailing us, you little shit? <laughs> Calm down, Mr. Harold. Steven would never do that. He's a smiley bear. But we should give him a token of our appreciation for his silence. Here, Stephen, take this baseball bat. You'll find it quite useful. Uh, yes. That's what I need. At least I've taken her weapon to keep her to not hit kids anymore. Uh. Okay. Better boy. Take the bat. And we'll take the photo. However, will I keep the children in line now? Oh, I'm sorry. I have a spare I can bring in tomorrow. Unless you'd prefer a chainsaw this time. I'll talk to Mrs. Phelps. <laughs> yes. Okay, well I can't do much with that now. I got a baseball bat. Which is good. Yes. Now here we have a manhole key. Outside of the post office. A manhole key is stuck in the top of the manhole cover. And to get it out, we're going to use this aura loop. As you would. Use aura loop on the manhole. <coughs> Ew! I fucking hate that. A slimy manhole key. Yes. Okay. We've got that. I guess we can move on. Nightfall descends. Nightfall descends upon harvest. So, cemetery, yes, okay. Finally something's happening here, I guess. Uh, graves, are these new? The headstone of this grave reads Jonathan A. Fresh soil and manure. Cool. 
Oh, hey, Mr. Potsdam. What are you doing here at this hour, Mr. Potsdam? I'm burying our cat. She passed away and I'm burying her. Go away and mind your own business. Then, where's the cat? I... I left her at home. Now leave me alone! Hmm... For some reason I don't believe you. Where is the cat? Matches. Prepared especially for your wedding. Well, I'll take those. Okay... The abandoned residence now? Uh... The Johnson residence is what it is. Okay. I was like, that wasn't the abandoned house with the swamp-ass lady. Or the wasp-ass lady, not the swamp-ass. Okay. So his car is in the garage. Nothing else to click on. Manhole cover. Locked in place. A nasty stench drifts up from below. Yes. Well, you know, what we have is we have the, uh, the greasy manhole key that we lubed up. Let's enter. That's not what a fucking sewer looks like. Whatever. Floor grate. A rusted grate is bolted into the damn floor. A coat of moisture has formed along the surface of the wheel valve. A small section of the wall has been resealed due to water damage. There's a tiny indentation in the concrete. Well. Let's break out our shovel. Mmm. Let's have a look. Yes. Nothing here. Let's move on. Nothing here. Let's move on. The fuck are we? Empty oil cans litter the floor. A large oil pan filled with lugs and bolts. We're under the garage. Okay, there's the car. And now we need to get a pitchfork and a dolly. The window, it won't let me click on the window. There's our pitchfork, an old rusty pitchfork. This dolly might be useful after the wedding. I don't know what that means. Okay. Why after the wedding? Anything else? Garbage bags are piled up against the wall. Examine the tool bench. A myriad of goodies. Well, let's see. A rubber mallet. A flashlight missing batteries. A Phillips screwdriver. I'll take that. A sander, gas can. Wait, what does that say? Etched on the side, thinking of you, Edna. Okay. A faded poster, 1948 Sexiest Tomboy Award. Annual blood drive has been marked on the upcoming Saturday. What is this blood drive? Everyone makes a big deal about that too, just like the fucking bake sale in the lodge. Um... Okay, I don't think there's anything else here. I think it's just the... The pitchfork wouldn't let me pick it up. The fuck?! Pixel hunting bullshit. Alright, now we're supposed to f fuck up the car, I guess? No, with the screwdriver. <laughs> nice! Did it! Did it! Hooray for me! Yeah, I think I didn't uh, go to the lodge, but we're... Uh, apparently, if you go to the lodge first, this is the task they give you. One of my initiation tasks, I guess, is to fuck up this guy's tucker. Which I guess is a type of car. So... So yay, we've, d we've done our task. So, you have completed your first task. Uh-huh. Now that you've scratched the tucker, you may proceed to your second task. 
will steal a bolt of fabric from the fireman and bring it to me. A bolt of cloth? Okay. Very well then. Use whatever means necessary, but bring the cloth to me here and I shall give you your third task. Night falls again. And it's the same fucking movie. Nothing changes ever. That's how we save the money. Let's take off all our clothes again. Please, God, stop with the shirt no more. Ooh, big stretch, yes. Same too. What do you people want from me? Your Welcome to our order. The hand that grips the life step. Still looks the same to me. Step. Yes, it does appear to be the same. Well, thank you for joining me for another episode of Harvester. Uh, we got to die a couple times in this episode. That was nice. We got to experience a couple cool things there. And uh, we'll see what crimes the Lodge has us perform in the future. So I'll see you next time. You stay safe out there, and you have a good night.